it's Robo, and we're back with another episode of Robo Reviews. And on this episode, we're literally gonna take care of a review that's like six months in the making, and that is these bad boys. The Solomon XA Pro 3D Forces 2 Mid-Height Gore-Tex Hiking Boot. Now there's no point in us waiting another six months. Check it out. So here we have it, Solomon XA Pro 3D Forces 2 Mid-Height Hiking Boot. Uh, now this is a Gore-Tex lined waterproof hiking boot and is the military version of the civilian version of the exact same boot. And honestly, the only differences really are, are the coloration options uh, in terms of the feature set. Now I've been wearing this boot as of about, uh, you know, early springtime, April-ish. Uh, and I used it for the first time in a milsim at American Milsim's Operation Copperhead down in Playas, New Mexico. And I gotta say, this has quickly become my favorite boot to use in milsim events as well as regular outdoor life. Now this is in contrast to even another pair of Solomons I have, the Conquest Gore-Tex boots or the Conquest GTX, as well as my original SWAT Hawk boots uh, or say my past boots like Magnums, uh, which are again more of a traditional military style boot. So let's get into the features of what you'll expect to get from these boots, what makes them awesome, why I love them, uh, and as well as a little bit of a torture test uh, and a deeper analysis of how the boot is constructed. So let's go over the features of this boot here. Uh, as I said, it is a mid-height hiking boot, which means it's about six inches high at its highest ankle point. Uh, it is Gore-Tex line, meaning it's completely waterproof, pretty much up to your ankle point, or at least the highest, uh, the highest opening points of your ankle, which is just shorter than uh, six inches there. Now, the tongue itself is also gusseted to ensure that you have a seal all the way down uh, the tongue and lace line. So again, supporting that waterproofing. Now in front of the tongue, you've got the lacing system, which is the Solomon Quick Lace System, which literally offers a one pull and uh, tightening option for your laces. No more crisscrossing or doing some bunny ears or any of that fun stuff. And actually the tongue has a hidden pocket for the lace attachment system. Once this is all done up and nice, you literally just hide all the excess lace right up underneath the tongue there and it's out of the way. And that, I gotta say, is actually kind of a cool little feature. Now I've been wearing these boots for quite some time, always taking advantage of this hidden pocket, and I still haven't been able to wear, wear down this kind of neoprene uh, kind of material. You know, long-term time may tell that uh, this kind of wears down, but as of right now, it's been absolutely fantastic. Uh, much more durable than you know any other kind of system I've seen uh, using this sort of materials or this sort of idea. Usually they start to fray and wear out quite easily. Um, so again, neat little feature to stow away any excess cord uh, in terms of uh, the lace fastening system there. Now these loops are nylon loops and on all of the nylon loops except the very bottom ones which don't generally get a lot of friction, uh, there's plastic inserts to help support uh, the durability of these nylon loops. Again, keeping down the weight of the boot by not using sort of any metal kind of connectors, which are obviously highly durable, but add significant more weight over something like a nylon. But obviously due to the friction, we want something inside like that plastic to uh, help support the frictional wear on those nylon loops. Now the boot itself is overall of a kind of a mesh-like material design other than the actual 3D chassis. It just keeps that the weight down uh, in the boot uh, when it's not really in high friction areas. Now the rest of the boot pretty much is made up of what the Solomon calls their 3D chassis system. And we'll split that into the top of the shoe and then we'll get to more at the bottom of the shoe in a second. Now, as you'll notice, it's sort of like a, a synthetic leather material that they use for all these kind of cool designs that run up to the lacing system. And this is actually not just designed for looks or you know cool high speed kind of appearances. Uh, it actually works to hug your foot as the laces tighten. Um, so instead of just having the pressures go down either side of the lacing system just here, as it tightens, it tightens the entire boot around your foot, providing a better snug uh, fit and therefore higher performance out of the boot itself because it means your foot is moving less inside the boot when properly sized. Now the bottom of the boot also plays into that 3D chassis system and what I mean by that is, so essentially you have alternating layers of, of supportive material and comfort material or uh, bracing material uh, like EVA. So you along the top layer here on the outside of your foot, you have a molded polymer kind of shank or support foundation 
that holds your foot in place. And then you go down to an EVA layer, which is a cushioning layer. And then you have actually another shank that goes through the base to again provide more of a stable base for your foot to st stand on on uneven terrain uh, and then again it, it kind of goes back into an eva and then to a rubber sole so you have this effect uh, all the way through the boot depending on where the structure is needed so you, again you can see here's the rubber tread sure uh, but here is you know that polymer shank that goes through the front and towards the back to again provide more stability both laterally and longitudinally um, across the actual boot for you know uneven terrain or high performance. So I kind of like that idea. The big common denominator is there though. Uh, these boots have remained comfortable while allowing me to be as performance driven as possible on the field. So um, really kind of a, a neat construction uh, of the heel itself. And again, I'll show you that in detail with another kind of creative view in a, in a few minutes here. Uh, now the sole itself, like I said, it's a rubber sole intermixed with uh, the, the kind of hard po molded polymer uh, shank. This is what Solomon calls their contra grip. I guess it's their kind of competing grip or sole pattern to say like a Vibram outsole, that sort of thing. Does it work? Sure, it's the sole of a shoe. Um, you know, it, it allows for high performance. It has a mixture of different tread and tread designs, depending on where it is on the, on the base of the, uh, of the shoe uh, to, you know, help support more friction uh, when you're putting foot to ground. So, you know, I, have, I can't complain about it. It's really held up really well. Uh, the one thing I will mention, and this goes kind of back to my uh, original SWAT Hawk review, something that, you know, a lot of boot manufacturers, I think, as they incorporate this, I gotta give them a huge thumbs up. This back curvature, to the heel uh, really helps with heel striking. Uh, the pressure that's caused by heel striking when we're talking about a heel strike driven uh, kind of gait, which generally happens when we start to run really fast. So this rounded part just helps the foot roll easier through the heel strike so it doesn't generate as much uh, stress going up your calf and up into your knees, uh, which is again, it's a good way to save your knees and help make your performance movements even that easier to do, saving you energy and, and increasing your endurance over a long period of time. So there's actually a rubber extension of that sole that goes all the way up into the front of the rubber toe cap. Uh, this is two things, so that adds extra protection for the already protective kind of rubber toe cap. And the tread itself is actually aggressively angled down for that exact motion. It's adding extra traction uh, on the tip of your toe as your foot leaves the ground during your gait. Now the rubber toe cap itself, obviously a great feature. This is to promote, you know, when you're kneeling, you're not actually adding extra wear to the front of uh, say a synthetic leather, which over time, just based on the number of times somebody wearing these boots may be kneeling and getting back up uh, would accumulate. So the rubber toe cap there, super important. Now you do have a little bit of rubber protection here on the sides. Now on the inside of the boot, it comes with Solomon's Ortho Light insole, which I guess, you know, is their version of a padded insole like most shoes or boots will come with. But again, it's designed in such a way that it plays into uh, the 3D chassis design, the multi-layer comfort and support design of this boot. Uh, in terms of, is it comfortable out of the box? Totally is. I haven't had any issues with it yet. Uh, you know, again, time will tell with, with something like an insole. Now on the topic of the inside of the boot, like I said, it is a Gore-Tex lined boot, which makes it completely waterproof. And I wanted to make a quick note about that. Realize that when you're buying a Gore-Tex boot, it gets hot in there because it's, well, it's waterproof. I mean, that means it doesn't circulate stuff at all. Now, I also said that I wore these to American Milsim's Operation Copperhead uh, in Playas, New Mexico. And for the astute of you, uh, New Mexico is hot. It's a desert. <laughs> so these didn't breathe all that well. My feet were a little bit warm. For me, that wasn't really a huge problem. I don't really notice that sort of thing uh, during a Milsim. Uh, I change my socks often enough, that sort of thing. So I don't really get hot spots. Uh, and I'm too concentrated on the game to really pay attention to how hot my feet are getting. But for some of you, that may be a problem. Realize that a Gore-Tex line boot is great for keeping out water, but it also keeps heat and things like sweat in your uh, in the boot itself. So make sure you've got adequate professional level socks that can get rid of that moisture and help dissipate some of that heat for you if you're gonna wear these in hot climates. Now, in terms of my overall thoughts, I mean, these are just boots, so there's not a lot more features to kind of go over. Uh, what I wanna talk about is their durability uh, performance and give you a kind of unique view of how one of these boots is, is constructed on the inside uh, or all the way through in the, its different layers. In terms of performance, like I said at the beginning, I absolutely love these. They wear like a running shoe. They allow me to perform at my highest levels 
while providing me a footwear solution that's still protective and rugged enough uh, to deal with varying uh, locations, environments, and varying terrain. So whether that be desert or uh, asphalt, uh, concrete, uh, you know, high hills, low valleys, uh, that sort of thing, based on one of the ops I go to, this boot has covered it all. It's comfortable, uh, and again, the features of it support my foot in high level activity, whether that be sprinting, jumping, climbing, ducking, diving, whatever uh, rules of dodgeball you want to throw in there, right? So uh, again, performance level, awesome. If you're looking for a shorter or mid-height boot rather than a really tall military boot or a trail running shoe, which is really, really short, I highly urge you to check these out. In terms of durability, which is a fantastic question uh, to ask of a boot because you know they're being used in a very high stress and high use environment uh, generally in a very hostile physical environment like a desert or mountains things like that now i have no better way of showing you the durability of this boot than to actually destroy one for you just to show you how hard it is and if it's even accomplishable. So as I alluded to in the main review of these boots, mine actually ended up being a little bit defective and only in the right boot and very minorly, but still needed to get fixed. I've got some separation in the bottom layer of the sole on these ones and everything kind of screamed just defect, you know, bad adhesion. And that's not a problem, these things happen. I reached out to Millbrook Tactical out of Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, where I purchased these from, who then reached out to Solomon, who have basically both lined up a solution for me in replacing these boots absolutely no hassle and free of charge. Uh, and in return, all they asked is that I destroy these, which is friggin' awesome because it actually allows me to cut these in such a way that we're gonna show a cross section of how they're made on the inside. So big thumbs up to Millbrook Tactical and Solomon Canada. I'll include both of their links in the description below. Check out both of these fantastic companies. There's a reason why I support them. All right, so fresh from the table saw here, we've got uh, half a boot either. You can't really tell that yet. I just want to show off what the problem was. If you see that the bottom layer of the sole was actually starting to separate. So again, uh, Solomon and Millbrook Tactical have taken care of me and gave me the directive to destroy these. And as promised, I've destroyed them in a very unique way, or at least this single boot. Uh, the other one's going to be done in a more creative way, less of a learning way. But this one being cut straight down the middle with a bandsaw actually allows me to show you the cross section of what goes into a Solomon boot. Uh, and this is a rare occasion that you could saw a $200 boot in half uh, for your YouTube channel with little recourse uh, in terms of financial loss. So let's take a look here. Uh, obviously you can see these things are, are dynamic on the inside. I mean, yes, the outside looks great and pretty and whatnot, but it's the inside that makes these things what they are. And as you can tell, multiple layers of EVA, uh, you know, multiple layers of padding, the Gore-Tex, all the kind of airflow padding up near the, the ankle all serve to make this a really comfortable boot. So again, guys, I just wanted to give you a unique opportunity to see the inside of one of these boots that generally you wouldn't be able to really see, uh, at least not at the high expense of your finances to do so. So what's up, as promised, we're gonna shoot the shit out of this uh, Solomon boot. I cut the other one in half yesterday. This is uh, just a little bit more creative a death for this warranty uh, situation. So at the old uh, 12 gauge, we're gonna shoot some slugs and bucks. So have fun with this one. Slug time? Slug. Slug time? Slug time. Like, it's staying together. Your biggest, yeah. We're gonna try putting it through it lengthways because we can't destroy it otherwise. Perfect, Jeff, let's do this. You guys good? Good to go loud? All right. Oh man, it's crazy. Okay, another slug. All right, going hot. All right, so as one final experimentation, since we've shot everything else in the boot, uh, that last one we shot with bird shot, just for shits and giggles, we were only gonna hit it with, uh, with buck and slug, but we figured why not. So we're gonna do the same thing, we're gonna hit the sole, just plain sole, some bird shot, just to see what happens. Just for fun, because we can't destroy this thing. So, hey, why not? You guys good? Yeah? Okay, going loud. So, this was the result of that little firing squad execution of this boot. Literally, it's 
still a boot. Um, I mean, we shot this from different angles with different type of munitions, and uh, it still theoretically could be put on your foot uh, to be worn out of a dangerous situation. And now, is this a practical test? Well, not really in terms of the whole shotgun thing, because I mean, if your foot was shot by a shotgun that many times, I mean, your foot is no longer a foot, unfortunately. So, uh, not really. But I mean, it's one of those things where if you're a real military guy, and you get into a really hairy scenario where your boots gets compromised to some degree, um, this is better to walk out of a desert in uh, or across a mountain in than your bare feet are. So uh, it just goes to show that you know the structure is still there. Now, if you're an airsoft guy, uh, a milsim guy, or you just wear these for outdoor hiking, again, take a look at what happened when I shot it with a shotgun. This means that it probably stands up pretty well to regular day-to-day -day use or at least casual high wear use. So there you have it, the complete destruction, breakdown, and overview of these boots uh, for your viewing and learning pleasure. Uh, as I'd said before, I do highly recommend these boots. Obviously I would say that because these are now my favorite boots, both performance, durability, and comfort wise. These boots specifically, the Forces 2 options come in iguana green like these, black, and a tan or desert version. Uh, and you can generally find them at pretty much most uh, tactical retail outlets that offer Solomon and you should be able to actually find them on the Solomon site themselves. So again, highly recommend you maybe pick up a pair of these if you're looking for a great mid height uh, and even Gore-Tex you know, waterproof solution in terms of a, of a hiking boot that you want to use for a milsim or military operation. Uh, you know, if you can spend the cash, these do kind of go from that kind of you know, 200, 200 plus dollar range. But I, I do have to say once again, it's well worth that money if you can spend it in your budget. So there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this week's review of the Solomon Forces 2 mid-height hiking boot. Uh, as I said in the review, I do believe that these are one of the best options in terms of the military application of a hiking boot uh, kind of footwear solution. Now again, that comes down to personal preference and personal use cases, but take it from me, I do solidly support these boots. If you're looking for a solution, I highly suggest you check out the uh, Solomon Forces uh, line, especially these boots specifically. Now in terms of what's coming down the pipes next, in terms of gameplay and reviews, well, for gameplay, I might be releasing some skirmish uh, footage that I collected a few weeks ago at a local field. We'll see what much time I have. But in terms of the near future gameplay, I will definitely be attending next month American Milsim's Rebel Yell, and then a few weeks after that, American Milsim's Faded Giant. So you better believe I'll be collecting a ton of new gameplay footage for you guys to enjoy. In terms of reviews, I still have a ton of those coming down the pipes too. Soon enough, I will actually be releasing a quick update review of my Peraz Designs uh, nationality IR flag patches, uh, since he now has released a, a generation three of those. And I do still have, uh, coming down the pipes or in processing right now, a review for my Ronin Tactics uh, Senshi belt, uh, as well as my Lalo footwear and my Inforce lighting tools. So be on the lookout for new reviews and new gameplay soon. It's all coming down the pipes for you soon. Now, I do wanna take a quick second to thank my two most awesome sponsors, being Enola Gay Smoke Grenades and Red Wolf Airsoft. Now, both of these companies provide me support in such ways that allow me to do more airsoft, but more importantly, bring you guys more gameplay footage, more reviews, and more philosophies to enjoy and learn from. So big thumbs up to both of those companies and their support they give me. Uh, please do check out their websites. They're linked in the description below. So whether you did or didn't like this video, I still kind of want to know about it. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. I love the conversation and the feedback. And if you could do me a huge solid, and that is like, subscribe, and share with all your friends. Keeps me happening in this YouTube game. And until next time, guys, keep having fun playing Airsoft, being good community members, defend what you love. Later, guys.